All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video notes for Chapter Zero. Uh, this is in preparation for Advanced Algebra, like it says up there. This is a prerequisite unit for an Algebra Two course at Speedway High School. Uh, we're going to discuss in this unit a number of review items from Algebra One uh, that are not included in your Algebra Two book, as well as some topics that will appear on the SAT that are not in your Algebra Two curriculum. And the first of those lessons is going to cover two-way data tables. So a two-way data table is a frequency table that displays information on not just one category, but two categories at a time. So down here in example one, there's a two-way data table that summarizes the type of vehicle owned by a group of males and females. So this data is broken down not only by uh, what kind of vehicle they own, sports utility or sports car, but also by the gender of the owner. So there's two types of questions that could be asked based on a two-way data table. You'll notice that the third column and the third row are totals columns. And what you do is you add up that row to get the total at the end of the row. You add up that column to get the total at the end of the column. And you'll notice that the totals of the total row and the total column are the same total. So by looking at this two-way data table, we can immediately see that there were a total of 240 people, 240 um, described objects here. This is this particular data table of summarizing the type of vehicle owned by 240 total people. Okay? So when we look at the questions, there's two types of questions that can be asked. We can be asked questions like how many, or we can be asked what is the probability or what percent of. Okay? So uh, the first question here says how many total people are represented? That would be the 240. Okay? 240 is the total number of people that are represented in this two-way data table. Now, that's not the only way they can phrase it. We have to be very careful and watch the language. So, for instance, it says how many total females. So, we go to the female row, go across, and we locate that total, 180 females. It would help if I could spell, I suppose. There we go. Okay, then it can be even more specific, and it can say things like how many females own a sports car. So as soon as we see how many females, we focus on just that female row, and it says own sports cars. We narrow it down further to talk about the 45 females own a sports car. Okay? All right. Then the other type of question they can ask is probability. Remember that probability is a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. Okay? It is a fraction less than 1. It is a decimal less than 1. It is a percent less than 100%. So we're going to be using two numbers to create a ratio, to create a fraction. And those two numbers are going to depend on the wording of the problem. Okay? So you'll notice that the first question here actually refers to two of the numbers we've already looked up. It says, what is the probability that a female, so the bottom number, as soon as we see that word female, the bottom number should be the total number of females. We already looked that up. That was 180 on the bottom. And then the top says, selected at random owns a sports car. So we're looking for females that own a sports car. We already looked that up as well. That was the 45. And then the last thing we would be expected to do is reduce that fraction. 45 over 180 reduces to 1 fourth. If you give the answer as a fraction, it should be a reduced fraction. Okay? I believe the delta math actually prefers a percentage. So you could also say as a decimal that is 0.25 or as a percentage that is a 25% answer. Okay, 1 divided by 4 is 0.25, and 0.25 is the same as 25%, because to convert from decimal to percentage, we move the decimal place two places. Okay, so the last question here says, what probability? what is the probability that a person, so the total should be the total number of people, which we've already looked up, that's 240, Selected at random owns an SUV. So this is a number we have not looked up yet. People who own an SUV, there are a total of 156 people out of these 240 that own an SUV. 
So 156 divided by 240. Need that to be, there we go. And we would reduce that fraction. Okay? Those are both divisible by 12. That fraction reduces to 13 out of 20. So if we give the answer as a fraction, it would need to be 13 over 20. Keep in mind that that is the same as 0 0.65 or 65%. Okay? So there's another example on the next page. Please pause the video and try the second example on your own. Resume the video when you're ready to see how you did. So here in example two, we have a two-way data table summarizing baldness in men over 45 and men under 45. So we have recorded their age based on 45, either they're older than 45 or they're younger than 45. And we've recorded whether or not they are bald. So we can answer the same kind of questions here. How many total men were surveyed? That would be 100 men total. Should move that. There we go. Okay, we've got that number right here. It says total men surveyed. That would be 100, okay? So 100 men total. How many men over the age of 45 were, were surveyed? That should be 40 men, okay? Again, we're looking for a total. It says over 45. As soon as we see over 45, we're looking at the total for that column, which is 40, okay? How many men over 45 and bald? That's one of the specific numbers that we're looking for there. Over 45 and bald is 16 men. Okay, so what proportion, what ratio, what, per, what is the probability of men over 45 being bald? We would take the number of men over 45 and bald, which we said was 16. And we would put it on over the total of the men who are over 45 years old, which is 40. And we would reduce. 16 and 40 are both divisible by 8. That reduces to 2 fifths. We could also say 0.4 or 40%, depending on what the answer is looking for. Okay? What proportion of all men surveyed are not bald? Well, the total of not bald is 40 men stated they were not bald out of 100 men. Again, we can reduce that. Those are both divisible by 20. That answer should be two-fifths. I'm sorry, I lied about that. That's not right. Not bald is 60, not 40. See, we're already off to a poor start reading. That's what we've got to watch for, okay? Got to be real careful about that. Number of men that are not bald is 60 out of 100. Still divisible by 20. That should be three-fifths. And three-fifths is... 60 or 0 0.60 or 60%. And I know you don't need the zero there. 0 0.6 would actually be the better decimal answer. 0 0.6, 0 0.6 or 60%. Okay, I see what's happening here. There we go. Let's get that fixed up. All right, so our answer there should be either three-fifths or 0 0.60 or 0.6 or 60%. Now, in the actual SAT, they're going to ask one of these questions, not multiple questions. So they'll give you a two-way table, and they will turn around and they'll say, you know, here's the table, here's what it describes, and then they'll ask you a question. So in example three, the table above shows the kinds of foods that are fed to cats and dogs currently boarded at a pet care facility. What fraction of the dogs are fed only dry food? So notice in the two-way table that the pets are broken up into cats and dogs, and they're also broken up into which animals eat dry food and which animals eat wet food. So again, we look at the way the problem is worded. What fraction of the dogs, so your total should be 25, are fed only dry food. So we want the number for only the dogs, that's the only row we care about, and this top number, the dry food, would be two. So our answer would be B, two out of 25. 
Try example four and then resume the video to see how you did. Okay, so in example four, it says the table shows the results of a research study that invested, investigated the therapeutic value of vitamin C in preventing colds. A random sample of 300 total adults received either a vitamin C pill or a sugar pill. So that's the first way the data is broken down. Each day during a two-week period, and the adults reported whether they contracted a cold during that time. So it's also broken up by who got a cold and who didn't get a cold. What proportion of adults who received a sugar pill, so there's our total. We want the total for the people who received the sugar pill. That's 150. It also means we only care about this row. It's the only row we care about. So our bottom number is 150. How many of those people, those 150, reported contracting a cold? That would be 33 out of 150. But Mr. Wills, that answer is not there. That's because that fraction reduces. Both of those are divisible by 3. Our answer should be 11 out of 50, or B. There's one more of these. Please pause the video and try example 5, and then resume the video and see how you did. Okay, in example 5, it says the table below shows the distribution of objects in a collection by shape and color. So we've got here information that breaks up these shapes by both their actual shape, triangle or rectangle, and also by their color, blue or red. So this is an example here where we have to realize that we're missing some of our normal information. This doesn't look like the other problems because they did not include the total row or the total column. So the first thing we should do on our own is add them. Okay. We should add one row and one column, and we should total things up. 7 plus 8 is 15, so there are a total of 15 blue shapes. 5 plus 6 is 11, so there's a total of 11 red shapes. 7 plus 5 is 12, meaning there are a total of 12 rectangles. I'm sorry, triangles. 8 plus 6 is 14, so there's a total of 14 rectangles. Notice that 15 plus 11 is 26, and 12 plus 14 is 26. Okay, so now it looks like our normal two-way tables. So the actual example 5 says if a triangle is selected at random, so again, that means we're only looking at the triangle data, and our bottom number should be 12. What is the probability that the triangle selected is red? So that would be the 5 would go on top. So our answer would be 5 out of 12. Again, you can convert that to a decimal or to a percentage, but you don't have to. You can leave it as a reduced fraction. So same data table, try the other question there, and then resume the video to see how you did. If a shape is selected at random, so again, we look for shape is selected at random means that we should be looking at the total of 26. Okay. So 26 goes on the denominator. What is the probability that that shape is a blue rectangle? So we go and we find out how many blue rectangles there are. And that number is our top number. So 8 out of 26. Okay. And then we reduce. Those are both divisible by 2, meaning our answer should be Four out of 13. That does it for the first lesson of, of the prerequisite chapter of chapter zero. Thank you very much for your time and attention.